I'm Young Moo Kim, and this is Applied Digital Signal Processing. Welcome to Applied Digital Signal Processing. As the title implies, this course is all about applications of digital signal processing, or DSP. Let's start with a basic question. What exactly is a signal? Consider some real world sources. Are the following examples of signals? What about an electrocardiogram or ECG, the electrical variations that drive heartbeats? How about stock prices or the ups and downs of the financial markets? What about sound or in particular, the sound of my voice. How about light or the variations in light that form an image? Of course, all of these and many more are examples of signals. Really, a signal is anything that provides information or data. But the definition I like best is that a signal is anything we can measure. The particular focus of this class and the field of signal processing in general are things that we can measure or sample at a regular interval or sampling rate. As you can imagine, we probably want to measure things at very different intervals, depending on the nature of the phenomenon. For example, there are things we might want to measure once a year, like average global temperature to track the effects of climate change. But for something like your body temperature, you might want to check once an hour to see if you have a fever. There are, of course, signals that vary much more rapidly, like the variations in air pressure that we perceive as sound, which can change rapidly thousands or even tens of thousands of times per second, so in less than a millisecond. Or the digital on-off signals of modern computing, which can switch millions or even billions of times per second. That's microseconds or nanoseconds. But no matter the time scale, we've developed really powerful methods for working with any signals measured at a regular interval. These methods form the core of the field of signal processing. So you may be asking yourself, well then, what's not a signal? Hmm. Um. Uh. Maybe happy thoughts? Psychic energy? Vibes? Like, yeah, that person is sending me signals. Yeah, those aren't real signals. We can't measure those. At least not yet. Well, almost everything is a signal. So the methods of signal processing have very broad application in healthcare, in financial modeling, in media and entertainment. In addition to these examples, signal processing is at the foundation of modern communications and also provides methods to predict future outcomes based on past data. Proper signal processing is a crucial component of modern AI systems, which try to find meaning within signals. We call this going from signal to symbol. For example, how do we go from a sound to words? In a smart speaker, like an echo, signals from multiple microphones go through a tremendous amount of digital signal processing, which feeds into a deep neural net to recognize the speech and even the person who's talking. Throughout this course, we'll get hands-on with all aspects of DSP through sound and particularly music. I'm sure you all have some familiarity with music, at least as listeners, but no prior musical experience is required. The entire course is project-based, and our focus will be to design and implement an audio compression system. Think MP3, which drives services like Spotify and Apple Music. Along the way, we'll learn about the frequency spectrum, sampling and quantization, time frequency analysis, digital filter design, and much, much more. I believe sound and music are a great way to explore and implement these core concepts that will then be applicable to all types of signals. But since this is a complete revision of this class, it's also an experiment. 
so your feedback will be crucial. New material will be introduced through these short videos, and our class meetings will focus instead on doing DSP and actually implementing it in code. Thanks for watching this introduction. Hope you'll join me for the next video.